hello. It's it's Saturday, so of course it's wet, it's miserable. Oh, good grief, there's a very long lag on the stream today. Very long lag. Oh, this is going to be amusing. Um, yeah, it's about, it's almost a minute. But never mind. Um, it'll be fine. It will be fine. I've just realised I need two of those, not just one. Um, so that's fine. How is everyone? It's really damp here today. Horrible. Uh, right. I need, I need, I need, I need some more very vanilla. We're very vanillaing today. Uh, we're very vanillaing and we're landscaping. So something quite different for me. Um, so while I'm waiting for people to jump on to the live stream, obviously those of you who are watching on replay um, will be here. Um, but uh, just while I am waiting, uh, I am Liz. I'm from Old Stables Crafts in the UK. I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. So if you are in the UK and need any stamping up products, I would be thrilled if you would consider shopping with me and trying out my customer service. Um, if you use the host code for a qualifying order and all the details of that are over on my website, you get some free product. So you get the shopping special, um, which fingers crossed they don't go out of stock. This month will be the new in color jewels, which are gorgeous. Um, everyone who shops with me, however large or small the order, gets a handmade card and a handmade bit of nonsense. Um, and it's all nicely packed up so that you can enjoy it. So, gosh, no one joining yet. OK, well, that's fine, because that means I've got time for a quick sip of tea. Um, so this morning we are going to be using... Uh, a very special oh there we are morning B morning Joanna so today we are using the uh, better place stamp set place places stamp set uh, morning Pam it's vile here yesterday when I was indoors doing the or starting the election count um, it was a nice sunny day most of the time and today it's not. So yes, we're using the Better Places stamp set. This is one of the host sets in the new catalogue. Good morning, Ineka. How are the Netherlands this morning? Is it as damp there as it is here? Um, I'm just going to get my tea out. It's wonderful, Joanna. I'm hoping I will do it justice this morning. Um, may not. You never know just depends on how things go. I have done some prep because one of the uh, projects that I want to do involves watercolour. So I have already um, done one and I'm hoping it will be dry by the time we finish. Just back from swimming. Hey, swimming's back on the agenda. Whoa. It's pouring. Okay. It's pouring in the Netherlands. You're watching from Coronation Street in the US. OK, you do know that Coronation Street is a very old um, soap opera in the UK. I say soap opera. I mean, you know, for want of a better word, it's been going for decades, probably since before I was born. Which is quite a while ago, um, but you're welcome, for, uh, V. Sorry, I haven't got my glasses on. I was wearing them all day yesterday and um, yeah, it wasn't a great idea. Um, we're using some stays on today as well, which, as most of you know, I'm not a great stays on fan. Um, but we're using Memento and stays on because we're going to be doing some lens work, some watercolour work and some watercolour pencil work. Morning, Karen, or good evening, as it is from you for you in Oz. So without further ado, let me flip the camera down. So this is going to be a simple stamping uh, concept. So will be, oh, I haven't turned one of my lights on. Um, I wonder why it was, in fact, I haven't turned two of my lights on. I wondered why it was dark. Um, so yes, we'll be starting with a quick and simple card and then, um, and then we will move up. Morning from a frosty but sunny Scotland. 
Well, Audrey, not here. Sadly, here is not at all sunny. I just realised I need one of the other stamps out. Um, I'll need other stamps as well. So I'm going to be... Um, oh, I can reposition it. I was going to say I'm going to be using the Stamparatus, but I don't have to use it for the first couple. Um, certainly not for the very first one. So let's take that out of the Stamparatus and find myself a large-ish block. Um, and then I will flip the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. Another Aussie. Hello, Julie. Morning, Lorna. Catching a few minutes before you set off for a wet drive home. Fair enough. Morning, Judith. Morning, Claire. Oh, while I remember, tomorrow, particularly for those of you in the UK, but anywhere, uh, anyone, do remember at two o'clock tomorrow afternoon, I've got my launch party, woohoo, um, which will have an ordering special and some fun and games and make and take packs that I will then send out to you. Um, so lots of fun. That's two o'clock tomorrow afternoon, UK time. Uh, and I'm aiming on it being a couple of hours long. So it's going to be quite quick. Um, but I hope to have lots of, lots of projects to show you. So um, hopefully it will get your uh, creative juices going. Let me just flip the camera down. Uh, for those of you who joined me on Tuesday, Thursday even, I've moved the picture in picture back to where it used to be. So Julie, your dad tells stories of meeting some Coronation Street actors when you were in Manchester. Well, that would be why it's, yeah, it's filmed there. Morning, Deborah. Is it for everyone, B? Yeah, anyone can join the uh, catalogue launch. It's free. Um, it's it's going to be, uh, you know, you, you get extras if you buy. Um, so, yes. Mm. Oh, that's good. Huh. So, I have got a quite dirty, because I've been very naughty about doing my stays on clean up but I popped my large um, stamp onto the block. Um, somewhat crooked, I have to say. So yes, anyone can, anyone, I'm going to put it on even more crooked because then I'll look at the stamp, not the block. Um, anyone can, anyone can join wherever you are in the world. You're very welcome to join, uh, join my launch party. Um, and... If you're in the UK, obviously you get to have a look at any specials that I'm doing. Morning, Deborah. You've caught me live. You have indeed. Um, if anyone is wondering when I go live, uh, there is an events um, page or a link to an events page on my website. Um, it's under tutorials. Um, so if you click the tab that says tutorials um, and then click events, you'll go over to my calendar um, so you can always see when I'm due to go live I do try and keep that up to date so uh, that people can find where I am right so this is in Memento and I'm on a very vanilla note card and I'm going landscape um, and I'm going to go slightly to the left purely because I do need to um, get my sentiment in you find it easier to look up to the right for picture in picture is that just me um I think that's where most of us do it Judith so hopefully that is what you're seeing um on Thursday I had it over to the left and certainly for me it was covered by the um covered by the live button although I gather there was some debate about where the live button was and when it was there and stuff um, so Memento is never black, black, black. So it's more of a dark grey, which is what I was anticipating. And it's what I've got. So that is fine. Uh, that is why it's quite useful to also use the Stamparatus. And we'll come on to that when we do our next project. So I've got my watercolour pencils. Oh, and I do need to do the... I do need to do the sentiment. We have three sentiments in here. You've got create, uh, celebrate the wonder of this day, happy Father's Day, and you make the world a better place. So I'm going to go for you make the world a better place, 
because it's then going to fit down into this bottom corner. So we got K from Australia. Good afternoon slash evening. Um, it's a wonderful image, Audrey. Um, as I say, it is one of the uh, one of the my brain after a day of counting up to ten. Um, I'll tell you about that in a minute. But uh, it's one of the host sets. That's what I'm trying to say. So it's technically free because you can only get it with host rewards. That's very crooked. But you know what? I'm going with it. Um, I think. I think it's crooked on the rubber. Um, and I've got the sticker absolutely being on straight. Right. So, oops, let's throw it a die on the floor because that's really what I want to do not um, I have two sets of watercolour pencils the two sets of watercolour pencils and I label them so I know which is in which set I label them with little bits of washi tape and I believe I am right in thinking that one of them is balmy blue which I will be using later balmy blue is there. Ironically, the balmy blue blue is darker than the Knight of Navy blue at the top. So do remember to read the um, the words. So I've got balmy blue, old olive, uh, which is from the other set. And I'm going to bring in, because I'm going to be using pale papaya, the nearest watercolour pencil I have to that is probably Calypso Coral. And certainly for what I want to do, that's going to be the most appropriate one. And I have a blender brush that's actually got some liquid in it, which is always a plan. Uh, let's pop those there. So that this does use both watercolour pencil packs, although, of course, you could do different colours. But I want to be as consistent as I can through the projects. So I'm going to go with this being a sunrise or sunset, doesn't really matter which. So I'm going to have some uh, kind of orangey colour in this case Calypso Coral, here. So the sun has gone, let me bring it up a bit better so you can see it a bit better. So we've got clouds, we've got a sky with birds, and then we've got all these hills with a river running through the middle. Um, so I'm, the sun has is either just about to rise or has just set, doesn't actually matter which it is. Um, so I'm just adding a little bit there. Now, Memento needs to be properly dry before you use your blender brush. Memento is... Um... Inika, I would dispute that. You see, I think uh, Pale Papaya isn't yellow. I think it's a mix of yellow and orange. So... particularly on very vanilla, that is not yellow to me. That is orange. This is the card. If I bring in a yellow, uh, if I can find a yellow, well, there's definitely Daffodil Delight in here. So that's Daffodil Delight. Uh... And that's Mango Melody. And let's go really orange. So that is uh, Mango Melody. And have I got, have I got a pumpkin pie? No, not really. But anyway, for me, it's a, so it's apricotish. Absolutely. And apricots for me are orange. But I'm watercolouring with it, with the pencil anyway, so I'm not using full strength. It will soften. Trust me, I'm a doctor, as they say. Um, but that against... <laughs> you don't need to stand corrected, but this against this, this isn't bad. I mean, you could mix the colours, but I'm trying to keep this reasonably simple. Um, Anyway, so this is balmy blue, which is quite dark, so don't go mad with it. So that's balmy blue for the sky. Um, and again, we're going to be 
we're going to be using the blender pen so it will soften and then I'm going to put a bit more onto my river um, but as I, as I was saying the um, the main thing is to make sure your memento is dry before you use your blender pen um, the memento is water resistant when dry you could use stays on um, but I think for a beginner stays on is quite a difficult ink to use Um, I think the whole is papaya yellow or orange is a bit like is turquoise blue or green and I think it depends on the shade and also your perception of colour. We all see, this is Old Olive, we all see colour slightly differently. Um, so it does have, yeah, we're not all going to see things the same. Now I'm going to go straight over the, the leaves because, you know, leaves are green. Um, so I'm not going to worry too much. This is a beginner card. Let's not make life difficult for them. I say beginner or quick. You know, we all need quick cards every now and again. So I'm not going for a solid, solid. I'm just, you know, we're going to be moving the ink around. And I will be using some of the leftover ink. Absolutely, Julie, it does. It depends on all sorts of things. Hello, Debbie. So I will just colour those a wee bit. But yeah, I mean, if I were to ask you all to leave a comment to say whether turquoise is blue or green, let's see what everyone comes up with. Right, so let's start with the Calypso Coral. And just blend that out a bit. Now, do be careful that you don't rub in one place too much, because if you do, you're going to pill the paper. So yes, let me know if you think turquoise is green or blue. And it depends is not an answer. Aren't I horrid? So then we're doing the sky. And I'm trying not to go over the black too much because it will, if it's not fully dry, it will pick, pick up on the, um, on the blender pen. Um, although I can't avoid it here because this is the river and it's black. But I am going to bring in a bit of the blue from the pen just onto my clouds. So I'm just using a leftover colour just to give the clouds a little bit of definition. Doesn't need much, just a little bit. <laughs> uh, that depends. Yeah, you see, bluey green. No, no, that wasn't the question. The question wasn't, is it bluey green? The question was, is it blue or is it green? Bluey green or it depends, not allowed. Come on, be decisive, everyone. So then this is the old olive. And again, we're... Blue. Thank you, Debbie. Someone is decisive. So that is our card. Let me just bring that up a bit so you can see it a bit better. So that's our card done. But of course, on Simple Stamping Saturday, we need to worry about our envelope as well. It's both. Yeah, you see, that's not allowed, Deborah. It's blue, it's blue, it's green. See, we're all coming up with, well, there's a definite lean towards blue. Um, but, but turquoise has different shades depending on where it is, where it was mined. A true, true, a bit like uh, sapphires. Blue with a smidge of green, I like that. I am too missed my comment. Turquoise blue. You are Audrey? No, I've just seen it. It's blue. <laughs> you see, I can be I can be rotten and make you do make you answer questions. 
Right, okay, I'm thinking that will go on there, yes. So, uh, now this will depend on the country in which you are in as to whether you can do this, but I want an image on my envelope. Um, in some countries I don't think you're allowed to, but in the UK you can. In the UK there are almost no limits to what you can... This is not a good ink pad, bear with me. My memento is getting dry, so I've got my reinker. I have been doing a lot of memento stamping recently, so I'm not surprised. But it will explain one of the reasons why the turk tur turquoise is blue. Okay. So yes, sapphires. Um, I went to Sri Lanka a few years, a few years ago, uh, about 35 years ago, um, and um, that's better. And um, sapphires there are either blue or yellow. They go all the way between blue and yellow. Still not a brilliantly inked stamp, but never mind. So I'm going to come down in the bottom corner here. Yes. Um, and stamp so I'm hopefully going slightly over the edge but yeah sapphires yellow sapphires who would have thought um I bought a couple they're not terribly expensive yellow sapphires are not uh good quality um so we've got our little image there I would have liked to have come slightly more off but I'm not going to color that I'm just going to leave it so it's just a hint um and in fact, that's the only thing we're going to be using that stamp for. So let's fold this. And somewhere I have a bone folder. Oops, no, that's not a bone folder. So, oh, there it is. It's in front of me. But yeah, yellow sapphires. So yes, I brought a couple home. And I was going to make have some earrings made out of them. And unfortunately, we were burgled. And um, they, along with all of my jewellery, got stolen. This is going back 15 years or so. Um, but yeah. <laughs> 35 years ago was just the other day. Uh, at one stage we believed the cards we sent in pretty envelopes tended to get lost in the mail. How bizarre. I I read that, Julie. There. Yes. Yeah, so you thought the pretty envelopes got lost and um, plain ones got through. Um, yeah, don't know with the UK. As I say, with the UK, so long as you can get the um, address on it, it basically is fine. Um, so that's our card and our envelope. So let us take that idea, step it up. So I have a very vanilla card base in landscape mode blue sapphire only yeah i would have done blue sapphire but it was all i could afford uh, i learned that a gemstone talk on our 40th anniversary cruise in november weren't you lucky absolutely gosh cruises do you remember cruises Right, so um, this I'm going to do more as a scene. Um, so I'm going to stamp my um, Hoojima flip again. I actually am going to bring in the Stamparatus. So I'm going to clean that um, so I don't get ink all over my fingers. So yes, yesterday, for those of you who are not in the UK, yesterday we had... Um, some local elections, um, so for councils which are local rather than central government and for police commissioners and mayors and all sorts of things. It depended where you were in the country as to what you got to vote for. And in South Oxfordshire we were voting for the police commissioner and our local councillor or councillors. Um, and I was involved in the count um, which is, I find it really interesting um, because it's 
you know, it's how these things in the UK work. We are uh, all the way back to um, hand counting in the UK. The theory in the group I was in was that they thought there was more likely to be money in them. Oh, OK. That makes sense, I guess. Right, so I'm going to do this upside down. So I'm going to pop my card into my Stamparatus and add my things. Actually, I'm not going to add my things just yet because what I want to do is very gently find the centre of my card because I want my, my image to be central. So all I'm going to do, or as central as one can get it, I'm thinking really. Um, so let's go that way. So I'm just going to very gently, and these outside edges are going to be covered very gently add diagonal marks because that's the easiest way of finding the centre of anything. I say they're going to be covered, some of them are going to be covered. So the easiest way to find the centre of anything is to go diagonally. Um, I say of anything, of a rectangle, square, those sorts of things. Um, Uh, my mother, <laughs> my mother always used to say, well, no, let's go back. Um, no, let's, no, let's go with what my mother used to say. She always used to say I had Rolls Royce taste and a mini income. Um, she was probably right, bless her. 40th anniversary is Ruby. Certainly in the UK it is. I don't know if it is everywhere. You didn't get Ruby though. Right, so cat fur again, what a surprise. Ooh, ooh. Um, our, our black cat got, um, got into a bit of a fight. Uh, there is a neighbor's cat who has taken to coming into our garden. And our wonderful black cat, who is um, the softest animal you could care to meet, decided to um, go for it. There was black and white fur going everywhere. So Pepper is black furred and the visiting cat is white furred. And, um, oh, that's getting better. Um, so, yes. It was fun. Hello, Margaret from Australia. <laughs> brilliant saying. Yes, my mother had a few brilliant sayings, bless her. Right, so if I want that darker, which I think I do, so this is, you know, Memento is not a black black. Uh, stays on tends to be blacker, uh, but you can get Memento to be black. Sounds like a, in, a New Zealander, we say champagne taste and beer budget. Same idea. Um, I think the poor kitty was probably the white one. Um, but yes, <laughs> poor kitty. So I've got a much blacker image now. Uh, I am going to just, no I'm not, I was going to extend my diagonals but I'm not uh, because I'm not using the card for the second one. So I know what I mean. Right, so the first thing I am going to do is find my nice eraser, there we go, and get rid of the pencil marks where they are visible. Um, being slightly careful that the memento may not yet be completely dry. Now this is going to bleed through, um, but I have a easy fix for that. I mean, a you could use a mat, but on the outside. But actually, what I'm going to be doing is putting a mat on the inside. So let's very gently just rub out the pencil lines. Right, so we now have our nice clean image and all I'm going to do is repeat basically what I did on the previous one. So I'm going to come in with 
dark papaya. I can't say dark pale, I'm sorry, it's like dark black and light black. Managed to get a stick in her eye. Oh, nasty, Joanna. Ooh, very expensive trip for you, absolutely. Ooh, ow. Not good. So that's my son. Then I'm going to take the um, wide end of the balmy blue because we're doing a. This is balmy blue, balmy blue light. Um, I think I need a new one. I have had this since it first came out, and I use it often. Now remember that these colours are going to be slightly different because they are on yellow. Uh, sorry, yellow vanilla because of the conversation we had about yellow earlier. Um, so they are going to be slightly tinted. And while I'm at it, I'm actually I'm going to do the river in dark. So basically we're doing the same colouring as we did for the first one. We're just doing it in blends but the trick is going to come in a moment, or the step up is going to come in a moment. But, um, and I have to say, you know, yes, poor, poor neighbour's cat, our, our boy, you wouldn't, it was like, butter wouldn't melt. He was the still back to his normal soft self as soon as it was over. Um, the girls, however, were standing around watching, interested, but not helping. And normally the girls are the ones that are more upset by these things. But uh, my husband was a witness. I mean, he opened the door and that kind of stopped things happening. But he did witness it happening. And um, he said that the white cat looked fairly unharmed. Uh, fur, yes, but other than that, not really. Uh, so I'm going to add some dark lines to our hills, just so that we can get some shading going. That, I think, is going to just be a darker area. But it's quite nice to use the shading that we have been given. So again, the bullet end, well, not the bullet end, the fat end, which mine is somewhat damaged used it at class all those year, all those months ago do you remember classes in person classes gosh so uh actually i'm going to go into the bullet end because it's a bit a bit difficult to know where the color is coming with the other end um so a photo came up f through my amazon photos um because i save my photos to the cloud using Amazon um, and um, it was this time last year so it was VE day this time last year which was really hot we have you've got a Rottweiler that used to try and help our cat if she had if she was in a fight some friends of ours used to have a Rottweiler and I have to say she was an interesting character good morning Catherine So we're on our second card for Catherine who's just joining. So this is my first stepped up version and we haven't got to the really stepped up bit yet. We are getting there. So if I turn this over, there's mess. But we'll it's easy to fix. Right, so that is our scene. Um, oh, I suppose I could bring in a little bit of the blue onto the clouds. Not a huge amount, just a little bit of ref re reflection. And what you can do with that, just to blend it out a bit, is to get your... Um, 
colour lifter, which is a misnomer, and I know I say this every time, it's not a colour lifter, it's a colour pusher backer. But you can then blend it so that it's a better, it's less obvious. But if I turn this over, um, it's just beginning to bleed through, and it's bleeding through much darker than any of the actual colours. The cat looks fabulous. Thank you, Catherine. The cat also used to take the dog's food. Okay. Um, I have to say that cats need more, I mean, they'll eat all sorts of things. Cats need more protein than dogs. Um, so cats eating dog's food is fine, but being fed dog's food, possibly not a great plan. I didn't know this until we had cats because we always had dogs in our family. Right, so I have got an old olive and a pale papaya mat and I'm going to pop those there but don't worry I'm not that silly they're not going there I mean they are but they're not so what we are going to do is draw our diagonal line again because I want to know where my middle is And this is a really soft pencil, so it's very easy to erase. And I'm going to do the same on this. This ruler is slightly bent. I hadn't realised, but it is. So this is very, very faint. You probably won't be able to see it on the old olive. So that's that. And then I need, so the old olive's going on top. So I'm going to, with the pale papaya, I've got this um, rectangle, which is almost exactly the size of the image. It's slightly longer and thinner, but using the guidelines, and we're not going to get exactly, because it's not exactly the same um, sizes, but we can use those guidelines to get as near to centre as possible and then I'm just going to grab some washi tape to hold those in place and then we're going to get a bigger one for the old olive and I'm going to as we're taking out the center I'm going to add that to the center piece of my papaya get a larger one so these are the stitched rectangles so this is the next size up which may just about be all right but we may need to go one further let's see what one further looks like in relation to the piece of card hmm no we'll go one up so we'll just go the one up So this again, we need to find the center. And because these are stitched on both the inside and the outside of the die, uh, we'll be left with um, stitching on the frame, which is basically what we're creating as a frame. Thank you. To all of those of you who have said it's a useful tip and nice card, etc. So, one piece. So, yes, so I was doing the count yesterday, um, and all we were doing yesterday, because it's because of COVID, uh, it was somewhat different from the last time I did the count. Uh, so, last time I did the count was before COVID, BC. Um, and hoping that will be about right. I'm going to cut this one and then I'll have a look at whether I need to reposition this. Um, but yeah, we have far fewer people. It's, I mean, it, if it had been before COVID, we would have finished the count by now. It would all have been done. It would have been announced and all good. Um, but with COVID, we didn't start the count until Friday, and we normally start overnight on the Thursday. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, 
excuse me, swallowed my own <coughs> uvula. <coughs> um, so yes, normally the, the count is overnight on Thursday. So for those of you not in the UK, our votes will always take place on a Thursday. <coughs> um, and as soon as the polling stations have closed, the count starts. Now I'm putting this on diagonally, not that you can see it terribly well. Um, I'm putting this on diagonally because it's easier to get through the die cutter if you do it diagonally, not straight. Um, so, yes, normally it would happen on Thursday. Um, but because it, it, um, because it, um, Feel, that feels about right. Possibly a little high there. Right, so I just need to bring it down a little bit. That's the phone that my husband will be catching. Because I'm not. Um, so yes, all we did yesterday was count how many ballot papers there were. Some people do not understand the concept of putting an X in the box. Um, and first and second choice and all those good things. Um, it's amazing, really. Don't know who it was, but they've gone away now, so that's fine. Right. So this is a definitely stepped up, possibly all the way to someone who's a more avid crafter. Um, but... because it's just rectangles, you could obviously cut these yourself. It's a little tricky to cut your own rectangles um, in the center, um, but I just like to give you an, kind of an alternative view. So this will go on top, plug brain in girl. So this one will go in first. So I need to get rid of our lines again. And I'm only going to pop up the old olive um, because if we pop up both layers, it goes from a standard letter to a large letter. I love the stamp set, um, Joanna. It's it's just so beautiful. These, what I love about this year is that we've got um, we've got paper as well as a as a host reward. Um, so, and it's huge. It's an enormous pack of paper. Uh, I'm just saying I have two, um, but yeah, loving the paper and that there is a, an option other than, uh, um, <coughs> excuse me, other than, um, other than brain work, please, um, other than stamps. Oh, didn't want to do that. Come on, up you come. Right, so I'm going to kind of hover. So I want it to be relatively straight on the card, as in central on the card, but also straight within itself, which it is. So that's that. And then, now we could fiddle and get a smaller rectangle um, so that we didn't have these ends showing, but I think anyone who receives it will just be stunned by the card anyway. So now we have two options for this, as in which which go uh, which side goes top and which goes bottom. So I am going to position it before I take the dimensionals off, um, so that we can decide what we want to do. Thank you, Debbie. Has anyone else had a set of dimensionals that's like this? It's so well die cut that they went all the way through the backing paper. Um, and I had a whole pack like this. I'm nearly at the end, um, but they are a little annoying. So this is then going to go over the top. So actually, that's pretty OK. Let's try it the other way up. No, I'm going to go the first way, so I'm going to go that way up. So let's get rid of the backing papers. And then I'm just going to very quickly show you the watercolor version um, and how to achieve it. Uh, I will finish that card um, later. 
uh, because we are three quarters of an hour in already and I know some people find that these videos can be a bit too long um, so I will basically be doing something very similar to this on the next card but I do want to show you the watercolour version so this is sort of like a diorama then we can just fold that and burnish now we have got this messy inside so if that worries you all you need to do is pop a liner inside um, it's you know easy to cover the alternative would be that you stamp onto a separate piece of vanilla card and lay that into the center of your the front of your card um, the reason I didn't do that is that I think it's much easier to have fewer layers that are moving um, it would just have been one more thing to, to you've had an occasional oh the dimensionals yeah Inika it's they are interesting absolutely Debbie it's, that's kind of the whole reason is that it pops out and because we're using the same colours it kind of works right so my final version with the oh and of course we could put the sentiment on somewhere I think it would detract from this um, my final version so my kind of avid avid version uh, uses the Stamparatus again let's pop that there because that works better uh, I am very quickly going to clean the memento ink off here because we want stays on now stays on is a mucky clean up which is why I don't tend to do it that often let me just have a sip of coffee a lovely keepsake thank you never thought of matting like that good Julie I'm glad that helps I do like to kind of switch things around a bit so let's just wipe that so that it's drier stays on um, actually the first thing I need is my piece of card that I cut very carefully and have now covered up there we are so I've got a piece of um, shimmer white and I've got let me just bring these up because I've got a layer that is sticky <coughs> so this has glue in the middle so it keeps things in place if you've got something small that you want to be able to stamp more than once so let's pop that there and then to line up your stamp take your stamp which we can now have the right way up pop it onto your piece of card and then pick it up still wet piece of kitchen paper right so that is now this is now going to stamp in the center of this piece of card so it stays on it stays on um, you need to keep the lid on all the time I say all the time clearly not all the time because you've got to take the lid off to use it but when you're not using it you want to put it straight back on and there's a bit in the middle so when you get it you get this piece of plastic that is its lid and it says do not discard uh, because it helps the seal I put some dimensional backings in the lid and that's just the right amount to keep that on um, at the right distance so I am going to stamp again but it is you can probably see it is a blacker black I want to just do the leaves a bit more because those are the things that are solid So there we are and then this just twists off now to clean that up you do need stays on cleaner or you can just let it dry um, a baby wipe 
will if you catch it soon enough will take the worst off so this is a this is actually an alcohol free baby wipe uh, but because I'm doing it quite quickly it's cleaning up reasonably well um, and it just means that your final cleanup is not as messy but you do need stays on cleaner but if you've used stays on cleaner um, once you've got the stays on cleaner off and you've got a clean stamp do condition your stamp with the um, the stamping up stamp cleaner which has got stuff in it that helps protect your stamps from deteriorating because of the amount of alcohol that's in stays on and specifically in stays on cleaner it can damage the stamps definitely if you're using photopolymer be very careful and do a very quick clean up um, alcohol and photopolymer is not a great mix now um, I have got one I've prepared earlier because it will need to dry but let's get going on this and I'm going to show you some alternative ways to do your water colouring and it's not like you know rocket science stuff um, but just some options that you have got I'm going to use one of our water painters this is the one with the fine tip and I'm going to use my chamois as where I'm going to clean up um, because obviously water and chamois work really well so I'm going to do exactly the same colouring so we're starting with pale papaya now my pale papaya is very new so a lot of people squeeze into the lid which you can um, absolutely nothing wrong with that but what you can also do is get a block and pick up some ink and that's far too much because I only need a small amount of pale papaya and then you can use that as your palette so again we're going to have and I'm using quite a lot of water because I don't want things to dry too quickly between colours and then to clean up the chamois will actually absorb a lot of that colour just because of the way it's made um, then we've got Balmy Blue is already dirty, so I'm going to squeeze and again, I'm going to have a reasonable amount of water and I'm going to go straight over that join to begin with because I want that to be the best blend and then I can darken the colour by picking up, can you see, let's bring it down a bit. Uh, just about um, so I'm bringing I'm bringing more ink in the further away from the Sun and then come back to my paler now I did try this with watercolor paper and it's fine but what I would say did I, have I still got it um, this is the issue that I had with the watercolor paper because of the texture it needed a lot of inking and it blurred the image so I wouldn't suggest for an image like this I wouldn't suggest watercolor paper I would just suggest the shimmer white um, the ordinary white the ordinary basic white is not uh, watercolor resistant so if you used it all that would happen is and I'll, let's do it on some very vanilla so if I put ink on here it's not too bad but it then kind of pools so it you, you haven't got the ability to blend in the same way and then it starts getting this rather nasty pilling um, so it's not impossible but it's not great whereas with the with the shimmer white you've got a little bit of movement oh I need I need blue for my river And purely because we've got this pixelated image of the river, pixelated, i.e. lots of dots, um, we've got a darker colour just because it's got this pattern. So you can use the same colours but get a, diff a darker feel. Oh, actually, I've just had a thought of what we can do that will mean that 
we won't have to spend lots of time doing the next doing the card for this so actually I want a bit of a bit on the clouds more water so very very faint on the clouds almost no color at all but if we concentrate on where they overlap we then get a bit of definition so that's our balmy blue and then all we need to do and I'll get a slightly larger brush um, for our old olive. Now I'm not going to go as large as the largest brush because that is quite, um, it's not easy to control. So just a wash, want a bit more water. Now, if you want more movement in your watercolour, just use more water, which may sound weird, but, you know. So if you want to do shading, use lots of water and then come in with more ink and it will naturally shade because the water will draw it down. I'll come back and do the leaves in a moment. I'm actually going to do this one next and again with watercolour if you want um, if you want to have different uh, depths of colour depending on where you are on your image don't do uh, an image that's next door immediately so if I'd done this one first it would draw ink from here and that's not what I want I want this to be dry And again, if I add more water, I can get it to pull down. So ink, and it's pulling, I can, it's much easier to add the ink and have the water do the work for you. And then let's just add some color to our leaves, just a little bit, just for so that people you know, realise that they're not meant to be black and white leaves. Hello, Kim. Oh, sorry, you've got a bad back, Inika. See you soon. I spend my life with a bad back, which is why I stand lots. So, clean my brush. Don't know why I did that, probably to get, I, don't, I really don't know why I did that because I still want green. Right, now I can clean my brush. As I say, if you use, use your chamois, it just soaks that ink in, really easy clean up. So that is that, but obviously it's wet. So that's really not helpful for a, a live, is it? However, in true fashion, here's one I made earlier. Um, it's not exactly the same. Every watercolour is going to be different, but it's kind of similar. So this one is dry. You think you've sorted your order out, have you, Pam? So you need to talk to me about the next step. When can you speak to me? Um, after this, uh, I'm around all day. Um, so drop me an email let me have your phone number Pam and I can give you a ring um, just let me know when suits you now what we can do which was what I was oh no we can't we can use this one um, we can actually layer that onto there I'm going to trim it down a wee bit but we can use this we can use our mat um, so I'm going to trim this down a wee bit so that it fits on our mat a bit better. Absolutely, Kim. The one that I think you missed was this one where we did it 
reverse. Um, so, I mean, this is a card, but obviously you can you can um, do it just as a as a piece of home decor. Absolutely. trim the bottom a bit. I want it to be not exactly the same ratio but a little more. That's better. Right. Pop that away. Get rid of my pencil marks that I thought I was never going to need to rub out. So we can pop that on there and I have got because I did actually prepare. It's a worry. Um, I have got some pale papaya, so let me just cut a mat for that. And it's going to be my standard size mat. Measurements will be on my website as soon as I post this onto the website, which will be early next week. So, card base. Fold my card base. Oh, it's lovely and warm. It's been on my laptop. Don't need that. Don't need those bits. So let's layer this up. Thank you, Kim. Shall I make this an expensive card? Why not? Why not, I say? So what we're going to do is have lots of dimensionals and it hopefully means I'm going to finish this somewhat over die cut or punched um, set of dimensionals because they are doing my head in. Back to the dimensionals nearly ended up in my tea. That would have been interesting. That's almost straight. So because this has been wet, it is slightly curved. Uh, so I am going to put more dimensionals on this than I... Oh, for crying out loud. Hi, Kay! You can always watch the replay, Kay, indeed. So while Kay's always really good at these things and reminds me to remind people, if you have enjoyed the video, please do give me a thumbs up. Um, if you are in the UK uh, and you need to order any items, please consider shopping with me. Um, and if you are not already a subscriber to my YouTube channel, um, that would be lovely. Um, always good. And if you're watching the replay and you've got any questions or comments you would like to make, please do add those to the to the comments below. It always helps if you take all the backings off. <clears throat> Just saying. Good heavens. Right, that's better. Um, so that's our... It's avid purely because of the watercolouring. Then we've got... Let's just call them stepped up. Then we've got the one in the frame. And then we've got our first card, which I have now lost. <laughs> How can I have lost my card? Where did I put it? Oh, there it is. It's under the ink pads. And this was our first card. So let's clear some of the decks. Thank you, Helen, for a thumbs up. Um, thank you, Kay. So there we are. So Better Places, it's the host set, so you can only get it free with a larger order with host rewards. Um, so we've got our one using Memento and watercolour pencils, and then we've got the smaller image on the front just to step it up a bit. It's a really easy way of making a quick and easy card a little bit special. Thank you, Joanna. <laughs> Thumbs up on the way in. Thank you. Um, 
Then we've got this one, which was using blends. So we've put a liner on the inside, but the alternative would be to, to use your liner on the outside so that it didn't bleed through to the back of the card. Um, and then just use the outside edge of the rectangle frames to give the nice stitch. And then use the inside of one of them for a mat for this version. So there you go. Thank you very much indeed for joining me this morning. Um, I will be live again for my launch tomorrow, two o'clock UK time. Um, and it will be about two hours with lots of fun and games, make and takes, which, as I say, you can get in the post later, um, ordering specials, all those good things. So uh, if you're joining me for that, you may want to have your catalogue available. Um, not a, It's not vital, but you may want to. And um, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Have a fantastic weekend and I look forward to seeing you again too soon. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you, Debbie. Yes, see you next time. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Kay. Will the launch be here on Facebook? No, it's going to be here. Facebook? Me and Facebook? No, no. I have definitely fallen out from with Facebook. Um, see you tomorrow, Catherine. Thank you, Margaret. Okay, off to see the rest of my channel. Thank you, Julie. Um, I'll just end with doing a proper... Thank you very much for watching me. And yeah, tomorrow, two o'clock UK time till about four. Um, knowing me, it'll overrun. <laughs> Why wouldn't it? Hey, this has been over an hour. Um, but yeah, fun and games. And the weather's supposed to be fairly miserable again tomorrow. So what else are you going to do? So thank you very much indeed for joining me. Bye bye. And I will see you again very soon.